This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Yo, I don't know where the dog, I can't, I was a little late because I was trying to get the dogs back on the screen. So I'm going to go, I got to try, I just thought of something to try one more thing, so I'll be back in just a second. I wonder what Chloe's looking at right there. What the hell is she looking at? There's nobody in there. It's so weird. She's just looking at something. I'll try it. I can't see your, uh, you know, the IL thing always shows up, but I know what it means. Yeah. So. Uh, today was just another one, a busy day. I'm trying, still trying to get everything set up in the office. I moved the whole like, uh, dresser in here. I don't know what she's looking for. She's looking weirdly to the right. There's nothing over there. <laughs> I don't know what the hell she's doing. No idea what she's doing. But she peed on the uh, bathroom carpet, so... Yeah. 
Yeah. So what's been going on? Yeah, I mean, I got a couple of these cold cases, but um, then I thought maybe we could see what you guys think is going to be happening in the next couple of days here. Hey, thanks, Simply Me. Yep, got another day now, another day. Today I spent uh, 750 bucks on a Roto Rooter guy to come in and. You know how you have those downspouts? You know, the, the, uh, for your gutter. Mine just keep going <laughs> and water shooting out of it. So they came in and were trying to figure out, like they cleared two of them, but the main two ones that are bad, they went all the way into like wherever the French drain is and it didn't, uh, they couldn't find, it just sort of failed, you know, like it doesn't, uh, doesn't work anymore. So I gotta figure something else out. Man, those guys, I didn't realize they were so expensive, jeez. Moon dance? What does that mean? Are you guys done saying hello or are we just gonna keep going again? Hello, 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 yeah, just not 17,000 times. You know, because if you figure if 50 people said hello to 50 people, that's 2,500 replies. Okay, um, I think there's a point where we can... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. Chloe! Chloe, can you hear me? She's way... Uh, not even, no way she can hear me. I'm trying to figure out what they're looking I think they're waiting for Chris to come. Yeah. And thank you guys for the nice uh, birthday from uh, yesterday. With all the super chats and everything. Let's see. And a few PayPal's in there. Yeah, sometimes uh, my wife cuts her hair in a way that I don't think it looks as cute. Like she tries to get all the hair out of her eyes and that's sort of part of the look, you know, you don't want to. I say, no, you got to leave the hair that kind of comes in front of her face. Well, thanks, Gloria Batari. Oh, wow. They just took off. Yeah, it was mildly peaceful. Uh, I don't know if you guys were watching any today. Hamas pulled one of their little tricks, or it wasn't a trick in this case, but, um, well, how the media just immediately jumped to that the Israelis bombed a hospital in, in the Gaza Strip when it turns out it was actually one of the Hamas rockets that uh, failed and, like, just bashed, you know, went right into it. I mean, what are the odds, though? I mean, I don't know. It's I'm still not really totally sure what the hell happened there. Like, what are the odds that uh, they had a failed rocket and it lands right on a hospital? I don't know. I don't know what the hell. I don't know what to, know what to think of it. But that seems to be the prevailing uh, theory. They're out. That's what they do. They like to put the children and. Uh, you know, well, they put their base where children hang out or hospitals so that if Israel, Israel wants to attack that target, they have to shoot the hospital itself. But uh, I don't know. I think it was um, in, intentionally done by Hamas. It was right, you know, it almost fit right to the playbook we had already talked Ivanka? about. Oh, <laughs> you know, I'll I was like, you back if you want me to. Hey, thanks, Alley Cat. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just trying to. What? What? I want to know what everybody's been hearing and seeing regarding the, the Delphi case here in a few minutes. Because it's just uh, there's just so much crap going on. I mean, one of the law enforcement people said one time that this has been the you know the craziest case they've ever seen. And on the side, not to in the public. 
and uh, it's the worst defense they've ever seen. Okay. Happy belated birthday, Gray. No, oh, whoever it is, they're in the same place firing rockets, Shaz. So what difference does it make? Uh, let's see, they're all the same. Oh, look. Shaz wants to make sure that we don't blame the terrorist group Hamas and yet and blame Islamic Jihad for it, everybody. Let's make sure not to pile too much on Hamas, who went in and chopped heads off of babies and all that kind of stuff. Don't, you know, don't. Uh -huh. Let's see. I tried to watch a few different things on Delphi today. Can't. Yeah, they're all over the place. So, so all of our college campuses and it's it's like that every time. They were they've been taught. See what's weird about it, this whole thing is this is what all these kids are being taught in school quietly. You know? Um, it, 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 so when when this happens, they're all already activists. Just brain dead wackos that can't think for themselves that's the scary part about our education system oh, Jesus. I don't think he's gonna just reprimand them I think there's something much more severe coming down Jake yeah I think they it's uh, I gotta start over I think something much worse is happening that would be childish, uh, just to reprimand them after they've already been reprimanded. They've already been reprimanded, so you're going to reprimand them again for something so egregious? They're the ones that also leaked the that 136-page document, the same people. And then they released the crime scene photos, and the F-tree, and the images of items in the water. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, did you, did you get back to reality? This is reality? Once you... <laughs> I mean, your friends, anyways. It's weird. It's almost like there's somebody in the room with them, but there's nobody there. That's what they're doing with nobody around. <laughs> How strange. It's like they're looking at something, but there's nothing there. Yeah. That's right, ghosts, sure. Yeah, I saw that. Some uh, uh, ISIS follower in Belgium shot two Swedish tourists today. But nobody will talk about that as much as the the psycho man in Chicago who went in and killed the kid, right? Because it's it doesn't fit the narrative. This, this is exactly the same thing. You know, the, the lefty media had a few days of like, wow, this is horrific, but it's almost all forgotten now. It's almost all forgotten. This is what they do every single time. I guess you just can't do anything when you have barbarians come in and kill people so savagely you can't really do anything you just gotta let it be or you know you're just doing too much god man man <laughs> think how much better it was for people countries to be able to do what they need to do about 150 years ago 200 300 you know Without all these stupid CNNs and MSNBCs walking around trying to undermine every... They, they almost like try to undermine what people are trying to do. Are they looking at a... I don't know. No, they're looking... Well, sort of. Like, Chloe's looking to the right to a door, and then Blue's sort of looking at a door. But not really. He's looking more at his food container, kind of. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I always say this at the beginning, but at the beginning, uh, during the shows, 
the freaks help support the channel uh, allows me to make an income on the channel and then at the end of the month I try to donate over 50% of the net revenue to various charities and that's the way we make it happen here so if you're out there I don't want anybody to go gray I don't get paid for you know I listen I, I understand I get it that you want to help out but I we don't need to hear the, the story of why I'm saying if you can afford it then please help support the channel if you can't you're welcome to be here too you know it's not uh, there's no condition there all right but uh, when you type in it just sort of sort of feels strange you know I don't need to know why you can't or something like that um, you know if you have some extraordinary circumstances you want to send me an email about yeah, uh, go ahead and do so. But uh, yeah, you can be able to become a channel member, etc., etc., etc. Now let's see. They don't even know why they're. Yeah, they don't. Well, here's the thing. I, I actually was one sort of. You can't really say I was like that, but I mean, um, when I was in, let's see, like like 1988. In the summer, I was one of those people like Osberg, you know, you go door to door. Uh, I was like this anti-Denny Smith, it was a, co uh, a pack that was anti-Denny Smith, a conservative, and it was for Mike Kopetsky. I didn't even know what the hell I was, I knew nothing about any of it. You know, I just walked around and go door to door trying to raise funds for this organization. Um, and had no clue really what the hell I was doing. I was just like, okay, every single night I'm going in there and I'm trying to raise funds for this pack to try for anti Denny Smith campaign, <laughs> which is weird because I'm actually now I would have been like, are you kidding me? Hey, thanks, Cheryl. So, yeah. I mean, when you're young, you're just kind of dumb, you know. You just sort of do stuff because it, it's like everybody else says it's cool. So, you know, uh, that's what that's sort of the way it is. So these, these kids don't think for themselves. They just hear what the pack says. So therefore, that's right. And every once in a while, you get that one person that isn't like that. Usually when you get older, you... Uh, they have that saying, it's, you're, you're um, liberal when you're young because you have a heart. But you're conservative when you're older because you have a brain. Right? I totally agree with that. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just, like, when you think through things logically, things that once made sense don't make sense, even though it would be nice. Wouldn't that be great if we could just all hold hands and sing kumbaya and make everything better. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. And not saying if you're liberal you're dumb, but that's just sort of the basic uh, thing. Like everybody's liberal. You know, like, oh, I'm liberal. What is? What do you mean when you say you're liberal? And you know, it's funny, is every time when somebody's a liberal and you start asking them questions, you, uh, by the time you're done asking questions, their answers almost seem like they're all conservative. They just didn't know it. It's, it's odd, you know, it's an odd thing. Uh, what are you talking about? Chewbacca? What do you mean panhandling? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. We went door to door to raise funds because people wanted to get Denny Smith out of office and um, so it would help Mike Kopetsky, the Democrat. That's it. I mean, I just told you what it was. Did your brain not work when I explained it to you? Or what happened, Ruby? Are you okay? Or When your brain went panhandle? You need a panhandle for a brain, I think. Ah, let's see. Ugh, many see ugh. God, never see you, never hear anymore, and you come in with an ugh right out of the gate. 
Let's see. I, uh, nothing wrong with being liberal. Pit one. Yeah. Who said that uh, any, is there anything wrong with it? I just think when people are young, they're liberal because they just want to be cool and it sort of sounds neato and everything. But the reality is, is when you think through things. I mean, what, what's funny to me is people that are really into true crime that are really liberal. Like, what, what in true crime is liberal? You know, like, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to figure that part out. It's really odd to me. It's like you're somebody that's wanting justice and the justice system to work and you want punishment where how far, you know, the lefties in the, the country, the far lefties, they don't even want like there to be law enforcement half the time. They wanted to fund the police and reimagine it. It's very strange. You know, I never really understood that. Hey, thanks. Marie Antoinette. Are you the Marie Antoinette? At your work? Yeah. Right. Oh, can any see you? <laughs> God. I know so there's another person on YouTube just like Nanny C. She's always going. She always goes to different. Uh, yeah, you might have seen her, seen her here yesterday, but she's very rarely here. She used to be here all the time, but she has her own little niche out there on panels, knitting and doing uh, macrame, that kind of stuff. Let's see. Yeah, I like them too. I do like that. I like the. I like people like. Um, uh, shit. Mansion, Joe Manchin. You know, he's a Democrat, but he he's sort of like the old school Democrats. You know, where they had common sense. What are you saying, Gray? Yes, I am saying that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Yeah, normal people. Those are good. Libertarian. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm just telling you what the the saying is. If you don't believe in the saying, then don't believe in it. I think it's accurate, though, because I was one of those people. I would always go around and tell people, uh, yeah, I'm more liberal. And then eventually I went, like, I'm socially liberal but fiscally conservative. And then I went, no, I'm not. And later I just went, no, no, no. I don't even have, it's, I'm not liberal, okay? But I used to say it because I wanted to fit in, you know, when I was younger. And now I just don't give two shits about what anybody else, uh, I mean, you know, I, I, everybody wants people to like them, but I don't care if you don't agree with me or not. Like, uh, it's just, if you don't agree, I'll just say, wow, you're ridiculous, blah, 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 you know? But, you know, I don't, like at night, I don't sit around Thinking, boy, that one person disagreed. Yeah. See you later. See you later, Kyle. You're on the wrong channel for that one. Did you ever know what the politics believed in? Their stances on a what? Are you, what are you talking about, Ruby? Ah, God, I'm gonna get rid of this person. All right. Find another channel, Ruby. You, you had your shots. No, I don't think he'll be able to save anything. Maybe they've got good intel and he's going over there for the photo op. I, I have no idea what he's doing over there. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, hey, Dom. Now, everything that the the uh, that pack was about was just sort of a smear campaign against the Republican. You know, oh, they voted to pollute the rivers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least they didn't vote to fund a squirrel co crossing that costs four hundred million dollars. Okay, they didn't do that. Look how crazy Chloe is in there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm just, uh, whatever makes sense to me. Like I said, like I've told you guys, I mean, I'd vote for uh, Mike Rowe. He, he's not anything. Um, I'm just uh, absolutely way more aligned, though, philosophically with, uh, like, Republicans and conservative. I mean, I don't want to say conservative. I, I don't know, because I'm not really overly religious or anything like that. It's just kind of, um, I would just say more of the Republican platform, you know. I just absolutely don't believe in so, so much of the garbage that uh, it just, like right now, I mean, I'm embarrassed for people who are just all of a sudden going, oh, good, man, those Israelis, they're always doing this and that, oh, God, for, you know, and just immediately turning back on them uh, 10 days after a absolute massacre where a bunch of psycho, disgusting people went into Israel and abducted, raped, murdered, killed, and uh, slaughtered babies and children. I mean, just disgusting shit. Like intentionally doing it, going in there with glee in their minds. And for anybody out there who's slowly changing your mind, you are an idiot, okay? It's just, man, imagine that happening to our country. You wouldn't be for going over there and trying to take out every single one of them. And yes, there will be civilians that die, but it's not the same. There's, there's no moral equivalency whatsoever there. Yeah, that's what I think. Tomorrow's favorites. <laughs> Look at her just sitting there. It's so weird. Like, what the hell is she looking at? There's nothing there. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. How do we go about fighting... Oh, God. How do we go about fighting colonialism? Oh, I'm so clever and... I'm so educated now that I use the word colonialism. Dumb, 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 dumb. Let's see. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, uh, Princess Sarah. What I would do is I would go and um, I would give your house back to the nearest indigenous person that you can find, because obviously you got your home from somebody, and I think that's a good way to fight it. All right. The rest of us who don't believe that uh, in what you're saying, um, we'll just keep the houses that we have. Is that cool or? But I, but I do think that liberals out there who say, because there's no conservatives that say it, that say, wow, we stole the land and the Israelis stole the land and they did this. I'm waiting for you to give your house back to the local Native American tribe in your community. Uh, you should feel like you owe them. And even though you spent all the money buying it and fixing it up and stuff like that, I want you to hand it over uh, to the nearest uh, Native American tribe uh, next to you uh, so that you can prove your point to all of us. And then maybe you'll start a movement where people start handing over their deeds. Uh huh. Now look at how that just went. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, I think it's strange when people talk like that. Colonialism, good lord. Got right out, went straight out of a college class, ran over, hey, what about colonialism? Yeah, probably. Uh, Chloe sees a ghost. I know, what, what's she doing over there? Anybody else, can anybody figure that one out? Okay, well, I'm not sure who said it. You said, what about... Come on, what are you talking about? Oh, okay, it wasn't uh, Princess Sarah, sorry. It was, you're right below the person. It was Umbrella Core. Sorry about that. It must have moved a slot up on me. Sorry about that, Princess Sarah. All right, anyways, I'm going to get to the, uh, the cold case 
stories now. All right, so we keep in mind we'll be reading some articles here, and we know what happens there, right? You guys just it's already kind of a really slow night. Uh, so you know, consider supporting the channel during this. Now, if you hate my guts because I don't think the way you do, then go do something else. All right. So here is a uh, Joan Abroma. I don't even know how to say names like uh, Abra Abramowitz. Abramowitz, something like that. So Joan Abra uh, Abra. Wow, Abramowitz. I mean, it's so hard to say. It. I've never seen that combination before. Yeah, probably like Abramowitz, something like that. Can you see that right there? A B R A M O W I T Z. I would say, let's see, Ab uh, Abramowitz, right? That sounds all right. What, what are you laughing at, so Zoe? My horrible pronunciation. Yeah, all, all Germans knew what was going on, though, and did nothing, so that's why it doesn't really matter at the time, you know. They stood around knowing exactly what their army was doing and, and people, and how people were generally treating Jewish people and other people. All right, uh, here we go. So this is Missing Person Case Now Murder Mystery. This is back in 1984 in, uh, I think it was in, oh, in my, Miami, actually. The other one, I think might have been, I think it was in uh, Florida, too. Man, it's dead as a doornail in here. Missing person case now murder mystery carrying a paper cup of tap her or tab so she had a, a paper cup of tab her favorite soft drink she walked out of a pizza store at a bustling shopping center near her wealthy parents tamarack home here, let me uh, make a folder here thanks Cecil hotel Well, thank you. All right. uh, Joanne Abramowitz. 35, the twin sister of a well-known Broward County lawyer was found bound and dumped in weeds behind a North Miami Beach business four days after her disappearance. So at first she was just missing. She would not have gone with anyone unless she knew or trusted them. Um, it, had, it had to be somebody she knew, North Miami Beach homicide detective James Cumby said Saturday. He and Detective Robert Stone and Tamarack Detective Sylvia uh, Pecule spent Saturday combing the Tamarack Town Square shop center, shopping center, uh, showing the slain woman's photograph to merchants. Let me see where that is. Tamarack Town Square. Right there. Let's 
see. Oh, is that like water right there? There's so much water. It's so amazing in Florida that how water just goes. I mean, it must be so fun to be a kid there and fish all over the place. So there you go. This is the shopping center here. Uh, let's see. So it was... Uh, she would not have gone with anyone unless she knew or trusted them. It had to be somebody she knew. He and Detective Robert Stone and Tamarack Detective Sylvia Pachul spent Saturday combing the Tamarack Town Square shopping center showing the slain woman's photograph to merchants, shoppers, and employees. They hoped to find someone who saw, uh, I'll just call her Joan, after 4.30 p.m. the prior Saturday. They had no luck. Almost everybody recalled the petite 105-pound woman with long, dark hair and the big, wide smile, uh, Kumbi said. She visited the center just half a mile from her parents' home in the fashionable Woodmont section of Tamarack almost daily, but no one remembered seeing her after she walked into the, uh, into the afternoon sunshine a week earlier sipping her soda. Her parents, wealthy retiree William uh, Abra God, man, Abram Abramowitz. Man, it's so hard for me to keep. I can't. I, every time I read it, I can't say it again. A semi-invalid, and his wife called police within hours when she did. Uh, she did fail to return. Where she did failed to return. Wow, what? I think it's just did fail, not failed, to return home because uh, the missing woman was an adult. Police declined to officially take a missing persons report for 24 hours. That is routine procedure. The report was made on Sunday. By the time, Joan may have already been dead. At about 3 p.m. Tuesday, an employee at Romanwood, a furniture uh, refinishing business in Dade County at 15401 Northeast. So this is where her, she was probably going to be found. In Northeast 21st Avenue, 40 miles south of Tamarack Shopping Center, noticed a foul odor. Time Joan may have already been dead. So let's see. At about 3 p.m. Tuesday, employee at Roman Wood. Okay, at Roman Wood, a furniture finishing business in Dade County. Is that? Let me make sure I'm in Dade County here. F L Dade. Oh yeah, yeah. That is in Dade County there.
A medical examiner said she had been dead for two or three days because of the condition of the body, which bore no obvious trauma, such as gunshot or stab wounds. The cause of death is still uncertain. She still wore a bluish-white trim tank top, her undergarments, and her... Hey, thanks, Linda Howe. Man, it's been brutal tonight. Absolutely brutal. It's taken away the, the whole birthday night. Let's see. So this must be it right here. Control, Florida, turn tight north of... Where a trooper... Oh, that's a different story. That's where a trooper was shot. So where, what page are they saying? Oh, 6B. Now this is a 635 page paper. That's crazy. 640. There it is. Uh, jewelry, a gold star of David. So she's Jewish and a large heart-shaped charm on a chain around her neck. A circlet of small lavender beads on her right wrist and a gold Timex watch recently purchased at the same shopping center where she was last seen. The description of her jewelry led to her identification. Her brother, uh, Oakland Park lawyer Richard uh, Abranowitz, drove at once to Miami Dental records were positive match. For Richard and his parents, the search had ended. They had driven to Coconut Grove to look for their daughter, who had once lived there but had checked uh, cab companies, friends, relatives, and acquaintances. The victim had been divorced for years. Her ex-husband lived in New York. They had no children. She had a boyfriend of several years and ended their relationship. Uh, in March. She had worked part-time in department stores. The victim's car, a brown Toyota, was being repaired. She often rode a bike, but on the last, uh, on that uh, last Saturday, her mother says Joan left home on foot to visit the shopping center. She was wearing blue jeans, uh, the blue and white tank top, and carrying a handbag with her identification, house keys, and address book. When her body was found, in the, was found, the handbag and its contents and her blue jeans were missing. Hmm. Uh, the detectives had talked to hundreds of people without a lead. Kumbi spent six hours searching the golf course behind the Abranowitz home on the chance that the crime may have taken place there. He contacted the residents of each of the 40 or 50 homes between their home and Tamarack Town Square because the number of homes are under construction in the area. Detectives made lists of all the contractors and subcontractors. Why is that weird? If she lived right next to the mall, she would just walk to the mall. Why is that weird? The Sunday canvas of the shopping center, including cashiers and bag boys at the public supermarket where uh, Bramowitz were almost daily uh, went almost daily to weigh herself. <laughs> Was the third conducted by uh, Wary, but determined detectives since Wednesday. Man, this is hard. I don't know what it is. This, well, the way this is read, it, uh, written, it's hard for me to read it. There is very little to go on. Uh, Cumby said, "It's a who done it with no leads." That's weird. So she just exits the shopping mall and then somebody, something happened to her where she ends up being tied, you know, wrist bound, missing her jeans and other items. Yeah, and there wasn't really a lot of coverage for some reason on this. Thanks, Kami. Family keeps Hunt for Killer alive. No one is 
been arrested for the murder of 35-year-old Joan Abramowitz, but her family is hopeful that offering $5,000 reward may bring results. The Tamarack family is offering $5,000 for help in finding the murderer of their 35-year-old daughter, Joan, whose body was discovered September 11th in a North Miami beach field. We just waited long enough and we decided to do something ourselves, said the victim's twin brother, Sunrise lawyer Richard. Uh, hold on, you guys. Yeah, blue's in here, all right. Yeah. Who are you talking to? <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. I'm outraged that the guy is still walking around. Uh, the family has dis uh, distributed flyers and purchased newspaper advertisements, reading in part, Can You Help Our Family? Uh, $5,000 reward. Her daughter was murdered. She was last seen. Uh, let's see. Last seen at the Tamarack Square Shopping Center at 8275 Northwest 88th Avenue, Tamarack, on September 8, 1984, at approximately 4.30 p.m. If you have information, call Detective Stone Cumby. Well, thanks, Faith. It's been a <laughs> you know, struggle tonight. Uh, the family plans more flyers and advertisements. It also has hired private detectives. North Miami Beach Police have exhausted most but not all of their leads, Detective Robert Stone said. We do have a direction in which we're going at this time, he said. We're not exactly uh, through as yet. Uh, Joan's purse was missing when she was found, Stone said, but robbery was ruled out as a motive because expensive jewelry was left on the body. And although she had a history of manic depression, Stone ruled out suicide for two reasons. The position of the body and her doctor's statement that she had been doing well at the time. I mean, it's got to be more than that, right? I mean, I mean where's the, where, her, where are the jeans in the purse, right? I mean, obviously, what did she just leave those somewhere and nobody ever found them? And then she killed herself? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what's going on. It's just been a really a crazy struggle in here tonight. I'm not sure what the deal is. Um, I mean, I appreciate the birthday thing from yesterday, but now we're on where the whole birthday was negated because we're way, way behind for this show already. Um... Uh, I'm not sure what you guys are talking about, though. Right, Linda did a wave attempt, nobody jumped on that one, and then KME did one, and nobody jumped on that one. So. 
it just is what it is some nights I guess but man it sucks to have it uh, take away the whole birthday uh, let's see Joan's purse was missing when she was found a ruled out robbery the longer a murder goes unsolved the less chance there is that it ever will be solved Stone said but you're still hopeful and somewhat optimistic the day medical examiner's office hasn't determined the cause of death the weather was hot and rainy when the body was found it was badly decomposed a man discovered the body behind his furniture finishing business after investigating a strange odor hey thanks uh, Kami again and uh, Eugenie and uh, this looks like Matthew gifted a membership to East to Hig The body initially was identified after Richard uh, Abramowitz saw a television news story about the discovery. His mother later identified the jewelry that was left on the body. Dental records were matched. No family member ever saw the body. Joan, uh, they never saw the body. Huh? Uh, Joan was one of the, the family's three children. She lived in her parents' with her parents and helped them around the house. The family moved to Tamarack from New York in 1979. Uh, she was quite highly educated and an avid reader of books about the history of the Jewish people. That's sort of, uh, well, it's kind of random. You know? uh, she spoke fluent French. She frequented uh, Bennigan's in Sunrise and the Lauderdale Lakes uh, Library. She loved pizza. The family has no idea why someone would kill her, kill their daughter. They think it was the work of a madman. My sister was a nice girl, Richard said. And then this one is November of 1986. Huh? On September 8, 1984, Joan left home for a six block walk to a shopping center. See how that's not really that weird? Uh, she made a few stops at the Tamarack square shopping center then stepped inside a pizza parlor it was a hot saturday afternoon she bought a tab and then left it was about 4 30. Uh, abramowitz was never seen alive again three days later the body of the slender 35 year old woman with long dark hair was found 40 miles away in north miami beach behind a furniture refinishing factory. I mean, there's zero chance she killed herself. I mean, it's just 40 miles away, missing your jeans, her handbook, and she's behind a furniture store. Really? So she just went behind the furniture store for you? Yeah, come on. Uh, let's see. Two years after Joan uh, died, police are at a dead end. A file as thick as a novel remains open at the North Miami Beach Police Department case unsolved we are at a total dead end said detective James Coomby her family is equally baffled I don't have any explanation for what happened said Richard uh, Jones twin brother and an attorney in Sunrise it's all conjecture at this point I I know as little as anyone else all we know is where she set out for the day and where she was found what happened in between god knows detectives spent the first 10 weeks interviewing her family friends shopping center employees golfers toll uh let's see center golfers toll attendants and florida's turnpike anyone who might have seen her walking home or getting into a car anyone that touched her life we talked to police sergeant david kelly said Nobody could recall seeing her that specific day. 
A snapshot shows Joan smiling, standing beside the family swimming pool, one hand on her hip, uh, brown eyes and thick dark hair hanging over her shoulders. She was five feet tall and weighed 105 pounds. Police showed her picture to dozens of people. Television stations ran several crime, uh, crime watch segments. The last, as recently as August, her parents, William and Faye Abramowitz, offered a $10,000 reward. The family retained private investigators and finally took out uh, pleading newspaper ads. And there was a whole bunch of them. You could see them on newspapers.com. Can you help our family, they read. The private investigators told us to pursue it, that it was a dead end. Everybody is involved personally in the case, Kelly said. She was a totally innocent victim. Joan was the type of person that if someone appeared lost and needed help, she would have helped them. There's no rhyme or reason or justification to what happened. See how, see how there's just these little random ones like that? They're just, it's crazy. And this is November 26th. This one looks identical to the last one. Even has the same end, but it's two days later. I, I won't read it since it's the same. Yeah, well, I mean, and then after that, there was zero articles ever again, and there's you can't even find her on Google. I mean, is that weird or what? Normally, there's some update that somebody does, or, you know, some kind of story. But hell, maybe this show, that her name popped up again, maybe somebody will do a quick story on it or something. One of the local news outlets. Who knows? All right. So, and then the, the reason I found out about that one was because the Shirley Brandt case, there isn't much more information on her. There, there was actually a dual article with both of them in it. Okay, this is the, uh, I'll show you what she looks like. Well, this is an older picture of her, but that's the one on, the, obviously, a glamour type shot. And this is in, also, Miami area, 1986 in June. So it says, a North Miami Beach business woman talking on the telephone with a client was shot to death Friday, according I uh, mean Friday, across the counter of her real estate office. The last sound, Shirley Brandt, 49, was a piercing scream. Don't shoot, she screamed. A part-time secretary typing at a computer behind Brandt uh, looked up to see her struggling with a man trying to grab the telephone receiver. Then there was a shot. The secretary ducked under the desk. The gunman yanked the telephone from the wall, grabbed Brant's purse from behind the counter, then dropped it. The gunman and the accomplice who was in the... God, if they saw that purse, maybe they got touched DNA on it. Who was in the next room, bolted from the office and fled... Let's see. The gunman and an accomplice who was in the next room, bolted from the office and fled down the stairs of the gateway office uh, building at 16, let's see, 16375 Northeast 18th Avenue. Wow, well that's like really close to, oddly, where her the last case body was found. Isn't that weird? That's like so close.
I mean, out of all this area, it's always, it's always weird to me when you have something so close, but you know, a lot of things are sometimes coincidental, I guess. <clears throat> the last sound, Shirley Brant, 49, was the Don't Shoot It. And then we're up here. Brant, president of her own real estate company and an active in support of Jews. Well, that's sort of interesting. Again, don't you think? A little bit. I mean, two stories in a row. I mean, I didn't pick these because of what's going on, by the way. I didn't even read these, but that's strange. Your owner, real estate company, and an activist in support of Jews who want to leave Russia was pronounced dead at Parkway Regional Medical Center. The secretary was able to describe only the man with the gun. She helped a police artist make a sketch of his face. Police said he is about six feet tall, slender, and wearing dark clothes. The woman guessed his age between 18 and 27. The other suspect was described as slightly shorter than the gunman and wearing light-colored clothing. The second guy, we got zip on him, said Detective Sergeant David Kelly, the lead investigator. Most of the offices uh, in the three-story building are vacant and no one saw them flee. No one else was in the office. Brant's eldest son, Benjamin, 29, who works there as a broker, was said to be out of town. Brant, uh, Brant and her husband, dentist Lawrence I. Brant, uh, have two other grown sons and a daughter. Another son, Stephen, graduated last weekend from the University of Florida Medical School. He was on his way home from a party celebrating his graduation and that of his youngest brother, Robert, from North Miami Beach High School. Stephen arrived early in the evening to learn of his mother's murder. Uh, let's see. How do I get to the next? Two B's, that? Maybe the next page? There it is. I feel so hopeless, so helpless. Her husband of 32 years said late Friday, we're middle class and we insulate ourselves from these things. They always happen to someone else. Dr. Brandt said his wife entered the real estate business 13 years ago to um, augment the family income. The business involves commercial property, primarily shopping center in Broward and Palm Beach. Uh, they're gonna do a $25,000 reward. About a week ago at another office on the same floor, a woman's purse was stolen. Police said thieves quickly Walking quickly in and out of the store and offices in the immediate neighborhood have stolen several purses. In the cause of Soviet Jews, the Brant circulated petitions to uh, two years ago at the concert sponsored by the South Florida Conference on Soviet uh, Jewry. In 1974, they were in a group of South Florida dentists and their spouses who went to Moscow to meet fellow Jews. A year later in Miami, the Brants participated in a hunger strike on behalf of leading Russian Jewish dissidents. Vladimir, I mean, the thing is about the, you know, the Jews in Russia, man, they were just, they were just treated like slaves almost. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, got that. Police hunt for clues. Investigators who combed a three square block area of North Miami Beach did not turn up any new witnesses or clues in the fatal shooting of businesswoman Shirley Brandt. We're following a whole bunch of leads, but nothing is leading anywhere. Brandt, 49, was shot to death. 
Friday in her real estate office while talking on the telephone with a client. Police who believe the shooting was the result of a purse theft that went awry are looking for two men. The only known witness was a secretary working in Brant's office at the Gateway Building. Brant and her husband, Dennis Lawrence, have been activists on behalf of Soviet Jews. I wonder why they keep bringing that up. I wonder if they think that that's connected somehow. So here's the one that had both of them in it. But let's see. The deaths of Joan Abramowitz and Shirley Brandt continue to haunt North Miami Beach police detectives. Although the investigations remain open, both have slammed into a dead end. Police are without leads. In a community accustomed to violence, Joan Abramowitz and Shirley Brandt were not the typical Dade County crime statistics, police say. Neither was involved in drugs, wrongdoing, or family troubles. Neither had enemies. Both appeared to be randomly selected by their killers. One woman plucked from a shopping mall, the second shot in her real estate office. Both crimes occurred in the middle of sunny afternoons. Both were innocent victims of time and place. Had they gone somewhere else that day, they would probably still be alive. It was Friday the 13th of June. Shirley Brandt was working at her North Miami real estate office. Two men walked into the Gateway Office building at 16375 Northeast 18th Avenue while Brandt was on the telephone. Don't shoot, a witness heard her cry. Without speaking a word, one of the men fired a close range at close range and fled with her credit card. Police believe the men tried to steal her purse. Brant, 49, the mother of four children and wife of Dennis Lawrence Brant, was to celebrate two family graduations. Uh, two graduations that weekend. Her son Stephen was finishing medical school. Her youngest child, Robert, was graduating from high school. Uh, her youngest child, Robert, was graduating from high school. Okay, five months later, the killer walks free and police have no leads. The missing credit cards have never been used. The murder of Brant, who was active in charitable causes, including the plight of, of Soviet Jews, shocked and saddened strangers and friends, it is a case that detectives desperately want to solve. North Miami Beach police passed out 6,000 bulletins with a description of the gunman. Her husband offered a hefty reward. In the beginning, we were inundated with calls, Detective James Cumbie said. We had people calling us from Naranja to Broward County, people who thought they had seen him in August. We had a Crime Stoppers that brought a hundred more calls. Uh, they've tapered off, off to zero. We had to really, we had really hoped with the type of money being offered by the family, somebody would turn him, turn him in, Cumbie said. There were two people involved. Only one was the trigger man. Detectives believe the killing began as a purse snatching. The week before, someone stole a purse from an office down the hall. That's the composite drawing of the suspect in the murder of Shirley Brandt. He's described as slim, six feet tall, and about... 18 to 20 years old. Well, what does he look like? I mean, is he white, black, Hispanic, you know? Brant said they believe uh, may have been tried to fight back, that she might have fought back. She, had, uh, she just held onto the telephone, her husband said. You never know what you're going to do in a situation. She was talking to a friend and a client. The assailant tried to grab the phone away from the gunman. Uh, the assailant tried to grab the phone away from the, and the gun fired. It was all over in less than a minute. The Brandt family has coped the best they can. Her son Benjamin, who was a business partner of his mother, 
has moved the office of the family business Brandt Realty Corporation. Stephen Brandt uh, has begun the medical internship at the University of Indiana. Uh, let's see, it's been difficult for them. What, what about the other case though? Does it go on? To it's weird how they don't really talk about hers at all. I think they would have. Huh, well, I guess that's it. I mean, it's weird that you, you bring both their names up, but you only talk about the Brants the whole time. You know, you just barely mention her. Hers is the one that's more ominous, where this, this one's like a robbery that went awry, where this one's like a, you know, serial killer type, <laughs> you know, uh, abducted, tied, and bound, and everything. Yeah. Anyways, you guys, is there a chance in hell we're going to reach the goal tonight? It'd be awesome. I would appreciate it. Seems like we just uh, had a, it's a strange, uh, I'm not sure what's going on tonight. Some wild, is it the, the clouds, the stars alignments? What is it? Uh, but anyways, uh, on this channel, every single night, we raise funds to help support me. You guys are the only source of income. So when we're doing these shows and there's, you know, like uh, $60 for the night or something, and I'm going to be giving away uh, over 50% of the net revenue, it makes it hard to do the three-hour shows. So I'm not really sure. But anyways, I appreciate any support you guys can can give on the channel. We do it every single night here. Uh, I try to do the same types of shows every single night, but uh, maybe it's the full moon. Who the hell knows? Yeah. Should be pretty easy with 350 people. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for those. Just two crazy stories out there. I mean, the only thing that was similar to them was that they're both Jewish and um, other than that there and also what they were explaining is that they had no I mean it's sort of interesting that neither of them have been solved and they're they're not typically the type of people that would get murdered Huh? Nobody knows what you're talking about, Dankenstein. Ah, good, good. So why don't you go, everybody go watch that, Dankenstein. What's, what, what's going on tonight, man? It's ridiculous. Yeah, maybe I'll, I, you know what I could do is I could just go do my, uh, I, I got this whole dresser thing set up in here and I was kind of struggling today. That's ah, okay. I'm, I don't really want to. So, so. This is, uh, you know. Yeah, good for you guys. It's a current case, Gray. Yeah, because I couldn't tell that that's what he was saying. Is it something I need to switch right over to? Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna get going, you guys. I appreciate you guys being here tonight. Uh, let's see. I'm just not, I'm not gonna get to the rest of it. I I can't do this. Too many disruptions. Crazy shit going on in the chat it has nothing to do with anything that we're doing. Um, anything. <laughs> I mean, what the hell's going on, man? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's just, it's not, uh, this isn't, it's not fun, you know, it's not fun. God, what the hell's going on in here? Hey, great, there's this case, no need for a link. Well, then go watch that one, all right? 
God. <laughs> I mean, what, what's going on tonight, you guys? Hon honest to God, I mean, what, what the hell's going on in here? I mean, did I do something different today that was different than yesterday? And I'm talking about the, the, the conversations and the weirdness, not the, the uh, low super chat turnout. So what, what's going on, though? Yeah. I have no I have no idea what what they're doing. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I had this uh well, I'll just do the Delphi documents here see what happens the articles not documents. oh it's all over YouTube man we got this new hot one yeah maybe, maybe we'll cover it too tomorrow we'll get, we got to get to do the big hot ones right so that we can get more uh, people in here hey what though I'm gonna throw oh, here's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna throw myself in prison and if we get out of prison we'll do the Delphi ones how do you like that uh, I'll, I'll put myself in prison for your bad behavior. Uh, let's see, where is this one? Uh, do we get the... Maybe I can put you guys in there. Where is it? No, not that one. No, not that one. <laughs> not that one. Uh, here. Well, just consider that to be the chat. All right. I'll do it. Yeah. If I get out of prison, Eugenie, uh, if I get out of prison, it's been uh, horrendous. Hour and 18 minutes and just... Whew. I have a... I think I'll do a timer on this, too. This This will be the proof. Thanks, Superfly. Oh, well, the dogs are doing something else. Yeah, uh, Blue's right down here, though. He came in. He's in this room. Yep, thanks, Superfly. And Scouting Dude. <laughs> there, are, there are very bad vibes tonight, Scouting Dude. Very bad. Thanks, Eugenie. So that should be enough to... Get to get the guard to get the hell out of the way. We're now getting to the point where we got the bail ma uh, matched, and we're just not being able to get out the door yet. Uh, we need the Uber ride. Yeah, well, I'm in jail because it was just I, I'm 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 taking I'm the martyr. I'm taking the punishment for the crazy chat conversations and what what not was going on. I have no idea what was going on. Thanks, Kami. And look at that crystal AKA Beaver Game. That was the Wow, I just woke up to find you in <laughs> by the way, I've been missing your art bell. Oh yeah, the ding 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 from the high desert in the great American Southwest. Good vibes, great. I think you're talking about this one now. Well, let's get that for Crystal AKA Beaver Gaming. This one. Thanks, everybody. From the green forests of the Pacific Northwest, I bid you all good evening, or good morning, as the case may be. Ah, tonight, we'll have on Major Ed Dames, a remote viewer. He'll tell you the things that he's seen, 
that none of you have ever heard about. It'll be on a little bit later. But our special guest tonight is Richard C. Hoagland. And he'll explain why we haven't been back to the moon in over 60 years. Because <laughs> there's a, a base on the other side, of course. Hey, thanks. Uh, we say howdy here. <laughs> there is a base on the other side. Yeah, anyways. But how you feeling, uh, Scouting Dude? We, we, have, we talked on the phone the other day. Hopefully, things are going all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of jail now, though. All right. Did you see Gray? Did you see that, everybody? Gosh, Gray held the show hostage to get the super chats. Did you see that? Hey, you guys, I just do the things. I try to bring in the funds on a nightly basis because when you don't do that, you're behind. Okay, because we got, uh, I'm trying to keep up the same rate that we've been doing. Now we've got more stuff to do. We've got our, um, what do you call it, the DNA. we got our DNA fund and the scholarship. And we're going to try to get to the over halfway at, at the end of this month for, we're going to get 6000 But anybody else can donate to it too. I'm just still going to put the same six in that I was going to put in. Uh, the only drama was me telling off the chap. Oh, <laughs> well, that's got a lot. Of, that's pretty drama, drama, uh, drama filled. All right, here we go. We're back to the. Well, we made it to almost a little bit over halfway, so that's pretty good. Better than nothing. Um. Uh, So here you go, Eugenie. <laughs> yeah, the moonwalk up the prison wall. I was just watching that the other day. Uh, let's see, as an Allen County judge has decided cameras will be allowed in court for Delphi murder suspect Richard Allen's hearing on Thursday. That's pretty cool. Can it be live streamed or? Uh, Judge Francis Gould said cameras would be allowed to partially protect Allen's constitutional right for due process. Is that because he wants there to be cameras? Allen was arrested on October 28, 2022 in connection with the February 2017 murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. In granting cameras in the courtroom, Judge Gould laid out how proceedings would go. The, court, uh, the courthouse will open at 8 a.m. for Allen's hearing at the Allen Superior Court. All entrances will be closed except for the entrance on the east side of the building. The remaining entrances are locked with no access to the public. All members of the public, including members of the media, will be subject to screening by metal detectors. All bags in possession of these, of those entering the building, are subject to search. Hold on, let me, that's way too loud. No weapons of any kind are permitted in the building except for an on-duty law enforcement officers providing security to the courthouse and the party. Cell phones are similarly not permitted in the building and violations are subject to seizure and destruction of the cell phone. No electronic equipment or devices are permitted in the Allen County Courthouse. Well, so who's who are the people that are going to be allowed to film it. 
Uh, let's see, that includes electronic watches. Media personnel are permitted to attend the court session. One or two cameras providing pool coverage will be permitted in the court session. Uh, no still photography or other recording will be permitted. No other media equipment will be permitted in the courthouse. The court requests the media be mindful that other county offices are conducting businesses in the building unrelated to the case. Media and members of the public are ordered to conduct themselves in such a fashion as to limit disruption to the offices, personnel, and patrons of other offices. The media are free to use the public areas outside the courthouse as long as they do not obstruct traffic in the streets and sidewalks surrounding the courthouse. Public seating in the Allen Superior courtroom, one is limited to 90 spectators. No food or beverages are permitted inside Allen Superior Court. Uh, water will be permitted for the parties in the the well of the courtroom. All members of the public and the media are required to follow directives of the Sheriff of Carroll County. The court produced recordings will be made available to the public or media. The audio record made pursuant to Indiana Criminal Rule 5 may not be copied or used for purposes other than perpetuating the record. Oh, wow, you just give that to True Crime Decline, and she turned it into something else. At the conclusion of the scheduled hearing, all members of the uh, public and media will remain seated in the courtroom until court security releases them. The court anticipates that all members of the public and the media will conduct themselves in an appropriate fashion. Huh, that's... That was kind of a... Yeah, so I guess there's that. I don't know which media outlet's going to get to cover it. I mean, is it... So, can there, anybody play it? Is it going to be, like, on Facebook or... I'll just play it later. I'm not going to try to time it. Yeah, I'm supposed to start in January. So this is a different article from else well, from today also. But so they're just catching up on it. Indiana police are looking into a series of photos from the crime scene of the 2017 Delphi murders that were allegedly leaked to the public. The gruesome images, some of which were sent via text and at least one of which has appeared on social media, were taken in the wooded area off the Monon High Bridge Trail where Liberty Germ well, it was taken at the crime scene, just say that. Crime scene photos obviously serve an investigative purpose and the evidence depicted in these pictures can be used to potentially demonstrate the guilt of a particular individual. Uh, oh, now I have to quote the murder shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing is how they get, they were like last, you know, in this whole thing. Uh, so anyways, Kevin Green, Greenlee co-host of the Murder Sheet podcast, the hypocritical podcast, which has been closely covering Allen's case, told Fox Digital, yeah, you mean they were covering Klein's case, right? Remember how they covered Keegan Klein and the dad for like a year and a half? And didn't even think Keegan Klein was a guy, they thought it was Ron Logan, but somehow now they're just these experts on Richard Allen. Pulled Fox News Digital, so obviously it's very important for a jury to see these photos and these images. Right, right. But that's great. Yeah, they're, they're going to get to see them. you got to see them too. He further explained that when crime scene images are shown during trials, 
they're typically you know what's weird is this guy hasn't ever done a a trial like that he, this is he's not a attorney where you go to court everybody knows the same things that he's saying here they, they did there's no extra knowledge you know typically a display on screen to the jury and the precautions are made no one gets an opportunity to copy and distribute the pictures outside of the court yeah it's really obvious everybody knows that thank you though since the Delphi murders crime scene photos have been already been dispersed through social media and are now forever available for the public view which could harm suspect Richard Allen's case I thought you said earlier it was going to harm the case of the uh, the prosecution. Investigators initially questioned Allen in 2017 after witnesses and security footage tied him and his vehicle to the crime scene. He admitted to being on the Monon High Bridge Trail that the day when Libby and Abigail were reported missing on February 13th. Court documents show, but authorities, I mean, show that information, but Authorities did not file charges until uh, years later. <laughs> yeah, because they didn't know about it. See, whoever wrote this doesn't have a clue what they're talking about. Uh, let's see. A clerical error may be the reason why Allen's arrest came five years after police initially questioned him in 2017. The Delphi case has been rife with speculation from social media sleuths, including the murder sheet. Anyone who wanted to wanted to could copy the photos and do anything they want with them, including emailing the family members or doing other harassing things. And in addition to the pain it would cause the family members, it would also potentially infringe upon Richard Allen's right because people seeing these pictures could get inflamed with anger and passion. Uh, it, this is the murder sheet saying all these things. We contacted police to let them know. Yeah, right, yeah. You're day late and a dollar short there. Uh, on their latest podcast, they discussed their process of confirming the authenticity of the photo, the process. You know what? You don't need a process of confirming them. You look at them and you know where, what they are. Okay? There isn't like, you don't need to go, ooh, I need to... Yeah, all right. Are you on like a, a, an hour rewind gummo? How far back is gummo? I mean, man, I... I'm just doing this because um, Eugenie wanted me to re go over the Delphi ones. Judge permits cameras in courtroom for the first time in Richard Allen's hearing. Cameras will be permitted in the courtroom. Broadcast cameras will be allowed inside the courtroom as Richard Allen, the man charged with killing Abigail Williams and Liberty German, stands before Judge Fran Gould. Allen's lawyer previously asked the judge to allow cameras in the court for all future proceedings. However, prosecutors expressed serious concerns to this request, stating that it would be distracting. They claimed that allowing cameras would create a circus atmosphere where 15-second video clips uh, could give an inaccurate impression of the justice system. Despite these concerns, Judge Gohl ruled to allow cameras in the courtroom during Thursday's hearing, according to court records. Only news media defined as newspaper, periodical, press association, radio station, television station, or wire service will be permitted to broadcast the hearing. Hmm. So, a lot of people will be in there. The court has determined that allowing a recording of the October 19, 2023 hearing is permitted, provided that the means of recordings will not distract the participants or impair the dignity of the proceedings and the hearing itself. Yeah, it's going to be crazy in there. So. <laughs> 
Man, you guys. I mean, just just being in prison was the the only gimmick that worked. I mean, look at it, just. Uh, it's going to be a yeah. I'm intrigued to find out. I'd like to see, um, you know, I mean, obviously somebody's going to record it. And so I'll go ahead and, um, you know, we'll go over it in the evening, I hope. You know, it's hard to, yeah. Well, all the birthday money just went out the window. <laughs> but anyways, hey, thanks everybody. I appreciate you guys being here tonight. I don't really have any... I don't know, just the whole way the chat was up earlier, it's just kind of a, it's crazy. I'm not sure what people are fighting about. Maybe I'll do a quick uh, IDF thing and call it a night. Let's see. Oh, yeah. See, that was another. This is the tragic result of firing rockets from densely populated neighborhoods. Oh, yeah. So there's another example they showed. See, that missile came flying down and landed right inside there. I don't know if you could see that or not. On October 17th, Islamic Jihad destroyed a hospital in Gaza when a rocket aimed toward Israel, misfired, and landed in Gaza. It seemed like the timing, though, after that little thing up there, to hit the ground that fast is pretty quick. Unless that was a different one. When I don't a rocket know. aimed toward Israel, misfired, and landed and all in of a Gaza. It's down there. This isn't no, maybe it was the time. second one. While actually. thousands of rockets are fired toward Israel, rockets fail. These failed rocket launches well, crappy caused mass rockets. destruction and the death of countless innocent individuals inside Gaza. No, I don't, the boys. Especially not yours. <laughs> uh. October 17th, Islamic Jihad. Oh, yeah, what was I going to ask? Yeah. Uh, check your own footage before you accuse Israel. It's amazing how many, how quickly everybody wanted to condemn them for it. See, that just shows you how just trigger everybody is so quickly to, oh, yeah, right? But if a, if a missile landed on a hospital and, and, I don't know, it's just bizarre how quickly the media was to jump and say that that was an Israeli rocket. Everybody was reporting it. And to Jeremy Bowen's report, where he says with absolute security and drama that this was an Israeli missile. What was that based on? Well, I a think statement in made fairness, by Hamas? In fairness, Lieutenant, I think he says there was claim and then counterclaim. And I think that is no, what he, he set said out in the, the beginning. Video. He said in the beginning, a missile strikes the hospital. He begins very dramatically. And missile. But he puts the IDF's up. denials in it. And he says, and I can remember the line, he says, which people in the Arabic world will not believe. He's putting the claim yeah. and the counterclaim. I, I, look, right. I, I mean, the point. The, the, the point I, I, claiming I, that it was a missile based on Hamas information. He hasn't been on the ground. He hasn't verified it himself. He's taking Hamas information and, he, and, and displaying that as the truth. OK, I think we've been pretty circumspect in our reporting this evening uh, of, of, of what has happened and, and we've kept an open mind on it. We've spoken to Mark Regan and we've invited you on to talk about it as well. And of course, we've had the Palestinian point of view. What about the, the attack on a, an UNRWA facility today in which six people were killed, a school? Do you, have you any information on that? 
we have not specifically targeted any UNRWA facility. Uh, looking into that event as well, for the latest hours since the hospital incident, we have been focused very much on that, trying to get intelligence out and to understand, to get to the bottom of what's happening. Uh, and I, again, want to reiterate, and this has been said and I want to say it, we do not intentionally target anything civilian. All of our strikes have an address, and that address is Hamas. We are fighting Hamas. They're using the civilian infrastructure for their military purposes, and they have a documented history of using civilians as their human shields. They have stopped the hospital. evacuation from the north. Chat. They have erected roadblocks. They have uh, intimidated people and told them not to move south in order for them to stay in northern Gaza, despite the fact that they know that it is much more dangerous for the civilians to stay there. That needs to be factored in. Uh, yeah. Can we talk about the politics? Because you'll be aware that President Biden has just left uh, for Israel um, and meetings have been cancelled in Amman, which crucial uh, to supplying humanitarian aid to people in the southern part of the Strip. You, the, yeah, why, why doesn't um, Jordan want to um, bring in Palestinians and give them aid? And the reason they don't want to, everybody, is because they don't want them anywhere near them as well because of the terrorist likelihood, <laughs> the terror. You know? yeah, the IDF must be under qu quite some pressure now to provide this evidence to the Americans who yeah. will... It's always funny how you got Jordan and uh, the surrounding uh, like Iran, everybody always talking all this big game about, oh God, you know, those Israelis, but they never do a damn thing to help the Palestinians other than supply them with more terror weapons. Isn't that weird? Like, they never actually try to make them, help them, and give them a better life, you know? The Israelis do way more for the Palestinians than any of the Arab uh, surrounding nations, okay? It's incredible. It's not, it's not even close. When they land tomorrow, I have to make some decisions on, on how much support they give to the direction of the war, to the ground incursion that is being planned. Do you feel that pressure? And, and will you make sure that that video, those videos that you're talking about are in the public domain in good time? Yes, indeed we will. And I'll tell you something more. You know, we are dealing with uh, the most yeah, but... ruthless and vile organization. We've spoken about the, the atrocities. I won't go into it and I won't repeat it. But there's also the other domain of information here. We have seen Hamas do the most despicable acts against Israeli civilians and against its <laughs> own civilians. And I think that it is about time for journalists who are doing their professional duty as journalists to act extremely cautiously when starting reporting of events with casualties in Gaza. Because all of the information coming out of Gaza is run and ruled by Hamas. And they have Thanks no issues savior. with lying. They, they don't answer to anybody. They are not beholden to truth, and they don't care to lie and distort and, and, uh, and, and to misrepresent events on the ground as long as it serves their purposes and they can blame Israel. This appears to be just mm. such an example of an event that happened that we did not do, that happened as a result of a misfire, and immediately, almost immediately, the first response is, blaming Israel for the attack without checking the data. And I would also have put I done a that, question though? mark. Have I done that or have I been fair in my questioning? You, I, I, I think, are commendable, sir. For uh, And it's uh, it's very refreshing. Oh, what uh, a, what a weird uh, host. Yeah. Kind of uh, patience and professionalism. I must say, I don't know if you like for me to say positive things, but yes, it is refreshing to be able to state our point of view on the BBC and to say that we feel that the duty of journalists is to verify data that <laughs> you know what's funny is i was watching fox news today when they were doing the votes for jim jordan i think brian kilmeade said something like what an idiot because this guy voted for you know uh, a guy that's already been you know he's been re he was removed so then he you hear him say that and then he then he didn't come back on the air i wonder if he was like punished or something immediately for that i don't know he, he wasn't on the air anymore right after that it was strange we provide definitely hold us accountable and hold our feet to the fire but do the same thing with hamas 
claim that, and verify and make sure that whatever they say isn't automatically put into a story by Jeremy Bowen claiming that a missile struck because it wasn't a missile and he has no way of knowing it. Just before I let you go, I mean, one of the lines he did say was that Islamic Jihad and Hamas do not have worse, weapons that can really. cause that sort of damage, that size of explosion. In your professional opinion? Uh, he said he reported from southern Israel he should have been at impact sites of rockets that have uh, exploded in many places in Israel that unfortunately got through our defenses. I don't know if, if he's seen buildings that have been struck. That's massive damage. It's uh, many, many kilos of explosives, especially the long-range rockets that both Hamas and the Islamic Jihad have. They cause substantial damage, and if people aren't in shelters, lots of people die. In Israel, they are in shelters, but I th find that uh, statement very Well, it's a bomb, but it wasn't their bomb, Chaz. You, do you pay attention to anything, Chaz? <laughs> Lieutenant Konrikas, thank you for coming on the program. Hey, tonight. Chaz, you're one of the most disruptive people that's ever I've ever seen. It's like... Um, and I'm the only one talking to Chaz, not everybody else. All right? I don't need you jumping in. The, uh, yeah, I mean, just pay attention for a minute. The whole world was claiming Israel shot the, the rocket that hit the hospital, but it turns out it was one of their uh, rockets that failed again. But it's so, I mean, you know, the conspiracy is like, wow, what are the odds that a misfired rocket in all those miles landed right on that hospital? Right. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I listened into your correspondent to Jeremy Bowen's report where he says. Hit by Islamic Jihad terror organization. Attaches visual related to the failed rocket launch by the Islamic Jihad that hit the Al Ali Hospital. Right, but I mean, what, was there two terrorist groups now in Gaza, Hamas and uh, Islamic Jihad? I mean, what what difference does it make? God, why would you want Gaza as your neighbor with that kind of shit going on? It doesn't really say show you anything in here. Maybe it was right here, I guess. Yeah, the interviewer is one of those sarcastic idiots trying to get with absolute some, security. Uh, bonus points when he has tea with his friends later. See, this guy was claiming the director of All Aldi National Hospital and you know IDF. We warned you guys with two bombs. So why are you not evacuating the hospital until this month? Yeah, I mean, that's another interest. Oh, look, look how ridiculous this is. Look at this. This guy, they're doing this video holding babies and shit. See what they do over there, you guys? Look how disgusting that is. Yeah, see, that's what they do. That's, I mean, just this video alone should tell you what kind of barbarians you're dealing with here. Yeah. Well, do you guys have any uh, thoughts, I guess? Uh, let's see. I can probably, I'll, I'm going to do two, 10 more minutes, 11 more minutes. Then I can at least get two hours in. But uh, I'm sorry if I let you guys down tonight with the show or the show quality. Obviously, something wasn't right. Um, no idea. <laughs> yeah, 
But man, it's hard to have. You know, if we if this becomes like a regular thing, man, this is gonna be not. It's not gonna work. Uh, right, right, right. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for being here. Uh, let's see. Thank you to simply me, Julia Morales, Gloria Batari, Ali Cat, Cheryl, uh, Marie Antoinette, Cecil Hotel, Linda Howe, K Me, K Me. Uh, Eugenie, KM Bear One, Superfly, Scouting Dude, Eugenie, Daphne, uh, KME Crystal, aka Beaver Gaming Sub Sub Crystal, who had her 20 was the largest of the entire night. Gummo, and uh, we say howdy here, and Tamara's favorites. Alright, so thank you all for being here tonight. Hopefully, tomorrow will be better. Who the hell knows? <laughs> but uh, we'll see you guys later. This is why I, can, I can't ever switch over to YouTube as a full-time job. All right. Thank you, guys. Be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a... Crime dissector, flag rejecter, I'm a certified human lie detector, gonna get ya, on a stretcher, if you try and play me like an old projector, crime sector, is my nectar, Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture, crime collector, free connector, and I'm always gonna be a pup protector, fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm meaner than a specter with a vector, on his pector, with all respect ya, just remember, I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda. I'm no pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you.